Now we're going to talk about pharmacology, particularly in the context of psychopharmacology. Now the site of action for most of these drugs is going to be the synapse, because most medications that are going to impact behavior are going to do so by impacting the synaptic transmission. And it can do this in a number of different ways. Um, and really drugs can have one or more of the following effects that can impact behavior. So we have effects on production of neurotransmitters, on storage or release of neurotransmitters. We can also have direct effects on receptors or effects on the reuptake and or destruction of those neurotransmitters. So looking more specifically at the receptors, if you recall, our uh, neuronal membranes are, are types of human cells and it controls what moves in and out of that cell. And there are proteins in that membrane called receptors that interact with chemical messengers. Most common ones we think of are neurotransmitters and hormones, but drugs can act as uh, messengers as well. This is also called a ligand. The receptor binding interaction will result in some sort of cellular response. So when the ligand receptor complex triggers together, there's some sort of response that occurs. And it can be a number of different things depending on the drug, depending on the ligand receptor interaction. So what we can see are different effects on these receptors. And the effects are based on two different things. So essentially we want to know the affinity of the drug and the activity of the drug. So what I mean by affinity is the basically how much that drug likes or sticks to that receptor. So it's the capacity of a compound to contact or be bound to that receptor. So something that has a high affinity is going to latch onto that receptor and basically kick off all the other things around it because it's very, very attracted to that receptor. Then we also have to think about that intrinsic activity. So it's really the capability of the compound to activate a receptor after it binds. So you can essentially have a drug that has a very high affinity for a receptor that doesn't actually do anything, so it doesn't activate the receptor. So it effectively will block the receptor from doing anything. So once a drug binds to a receptor, it's going to do one of those things that I had mentioned. It's either going to be an agonist or an antagonist, or kind of something in between. So what does that really mean? Well, an agonist is something that actually activates the receptor and an antagonist block. So we see is um, with this example it's a generic neurotransmitter so if you remember presynaptically we have vesicles that have neurotransmitters sitting in it they get released into the synaptic space here and that neurotransmitter will react with the receptor and cause whatever effect we want to see happen or maybe not want to see happen depending on what that neurotransmitter is doing. So a drug that is an agonist is something that mimics the effect of the neurotransmitter. So you see here, so it's actually going to bind with the same types of receptors and the neuron really can't tell the difference between the two. So it's gonna activate that neuron. A drug that is an antagonist is actually going to block the activity of the receptor. Okay, so it'll still bind, but it'll cause no effect to occur. So it's basically taking up space that otherwise would have been activated by either a neurotransmitter or maybe even a drug that mimics a neurotransmitter. So this is the same kind of idea except in words. So once that drug binds, it's classified as an agonist if it activates and produces a physiological effect, or an antagonist if it binds and produces no effect, so it's just a blocker. So what we can see here is when the agonist affects the receptor site, it's going to mimic the natural molecule. Now this can be a, an occurrence that is either a direct effect or an indirect effect. So the drug itself doesn't necessarily have to bind at the same site as the neurotransmitter. So if you see here, this is a drug that's binding at the same binding site. However, you can actually have a drug that binds at a separate site on that channel, on that receptor, that will still increase the activation or activate the receptor. So a common example for this would be like a benzodiazepine, which activates GABA receptors. However, it does not bind to the same place that GABA would bind. It actually binds to a completely different site on that receptor 
than GABA neurotransmitter would. A full agonist is a subtype of agonist that has both affinity and intrinsic activity. So essentially what this means is when it binds, it'll, it'll attach the receptor and produce a maximum physiological response. So it'll be basically identical to the natural ligand. Okay, so essentially you'll have high affinity, uh, high activity. So as you give drug, you will see activity increase to a certain point, which is the ceiling effect of that activity. Okay, so this is a full agonist. A partial agonist will actually have less intrinsic activity, but can have varying amounts of affinity versus a full agonist. So essentially what you're going to see is not a full response that you would see if you used an intrinsic neurotransmitter. Okay, so the drug would, would hit there, but the signal wouldn't be 100%, it would be 75% or 50% or what have you. So your dose response curve, which you see here, would be, this is your full agonist, right? So the dose would hit a ceiling effect, but this is equivalent to a, the, the body's own neurotransmitter where a partial agonist is only going to hit a certain threshold. So in the exposure of this drug to, for example, a full agonist, it's going to kind of look like an antagonist, whereas if it's exposed next to an antagonist, it acts as an agonist, right? We also have this kind of really interesting type of interaction that can occur called an inverse agonist, and it's kind of what it sounds like. So it's essentially a drug that causes the opposing activity compared to a full agonist, whereas an antagonist just blocks the ability of that receptor to activate. This will actually induce an opposing effect. Okay, so if we look here, we've got our full agonist that we talked about, our partial agonist, um, this would be an antagonist. This black line here is your, your antagonist because it's not doing anything. It's just blocking the effects, whereas an inverse agonist would do an opposing effect. So an example for, for that would be um, for the benzodiazepine receptor, okay? So things like um, Ativan or lorazepam. We would, we would see it affect um, the body by reducing seizures. Okay, if we have a benzodiazepine receptor inverse agonist, instead of just blocking the anti-seizure effect of a benzodiazepine, we would actually cause the patient to experience seizures. So it actually would induce seizures instead of blocking the anti-seizure effect. So once a drug binds to its receptor, it is going to be classified by the activity that we just talked about. Okay, so again, agonist will activate the receptor and mimic the natural ligand. An antagonist will activate the receptor and block the effects of the natural ligand. So going over to antagonists, this is going to dampen the response. Okay, so we're really blocking out the signal that would naturally occur with that drug. So we can have what's called a reversible or an irreversible, a competitive or non-competitive binder when it comes to antagonists. So if it's reversible, that means it can be displaced. So it can pop on and pop off if something has a more, uh, a larger affinity to that receptor. If it's irreversible, once it is bound, it is glued like super glue and cannot be displaced by another um, agent, even if that agent has a higher affinity. A competitive antagonist will bind to the same site as the agonist, but it does not activate. Okay, so it's competing for that binding site. A non-competitive, kind of like what we talked about before with benzodiazepines on the agonist side, will bind to a different site that is not the receptor site, a secondary site, but it will affect the receptor in a way that prevents the actions of the agonist or sometimes can cause like a conformational change, a change in the shape of the receptor so that the um, intrinsic ligand will not be able to effectively bind. 